Hello, I am Han Aram. Welcome to AlyssonPhysics.com. In this video, I will compare the relativity theory and Alice law. I found it necessary to compare these theories because they are very similar to each other. Here, we will compare these. What is the basic logic of both theories? Where does the difference between theories come from? What are the results predicted by each of the theories? I will tackle with these questions. In this video, the word signal is used for the electromagnetic wave. The word signal is used to facilitate narration. I ask you not to be confused about this. While comparing these theories, if we understand two issues, we will understand the main subject much better. Both theories are shaped on the behavior of signals. The signals can also be analyzed in two groups, incoming signals and outgoing signals. What is incoming signal and what is outgoing signal? Here we have the definitions. Relative to an object's own reference system, the incoming signals are the signals coming towards the object itself, and the outgoing signals are the signals going towards other objects. Now, while special relativity and Alice law think likewise about incoming signals, these theories have a different view of outgoing signals. Let's take a closer look at the incoming signals. Now, relative to relativity theory and Alice's law, the situation is like this for incoming signals. Relative to an object itself, the speed of a signal coming towards it is always constant and is equal to c. The movement speed and direction of movement of the object do not change this rule. Now, look, this is very important. We can say that this sentence is the founding declaration of special relativity theory. Such an important definition has been made here, the situation has been described. Alice's law and the theory of relativity think exactly the same about these incoming signals, they have no disagreement. Let's take a closer look at incoming signals in an animation. Now, we have an object. As we see, electromagnetic waves are coming, signals are coming to this object from all directions. Now, the speed of these signals are always equal c relative to the reference system here. What was the definition of incoming signal? Relative to an object itself, the speed of a signal coming towards it is always constant and is equal to c. Here too, the speed of these signals is c. There is also a very important situation here. Whether this object moves or not, the speed of the these signals, the speed of the signals relative to the object, is always c and constant. So when I move the object like this, in this way, the speed of these signals does not change relative to this object. Now, 
There must be such an interesting situation in order for the speed not to change relative to this object. Here we clearly see this situation. So when I move the object to the left and to the right, the signals are also carried together with the object. Oh, does it happen or not? According to Alice Law it happens, according to relative theory it doesn't happen, maybe it does, I don't know. What does relativity theory say about this subject? But now, the important thing is that this graph exactly meets the definition of incoming signals when we move the object. So whatever is written there, we apply the same here. Let's put a ruler. This ruler is connected to the object here. When I move the object, the ruler also moves like this. If I draw circles from certain points of this ruler, where the centers of the circles are this object, like this, it is clear how long it will take for this signal to come from this point to this point. Because that distance is definite. It is clear how long the signal will cover that distance. And since the distance between these two points does not change while the object is moving, for this object, these signals have to pass the distance between these two points in the same time. In other words, the time for the signal to pass the distance while the object is still will be same as the time for the signal to pass the distance while the object is moving. Now, in Alice's law, I showed you exactly how the situation is for incoming signals. According to the relativity theory, you can say that it doesn't work like this, this is different. But you cannot change this sentence in the relativity theory, because this is the founding declaration of the relativity theory. Now, we have seen the topic of incoming signal. At least, we have seen that. Even if there are objections on the animated graphics by special relativity, after all, it is not possible for you to object about to the definition of incoming signals. So the definition of incoming signals is valid for both theories. Let's move on. Now, there is also the outgoing signals. The two theories separate their ways about outgoing signals. Relativity theory says, relative to an object itself, the speed of the signals sent to other objects is always constant and equal to c, according to its reference system. Movement speeds and directions of objects do not change this rule. We can say that this is the second article of the Foundation Declaration of Special Relativity Theory. What does Alice Law say? Relative to an object itself, for the speed of the signal that is sent to another object to be constant and equal to c, that object must be stationary relative to itself. If the two objects are moving relative to each other, according to the reference system of the object sending the signal, the speed of the signal it sends is never equal to c, the speed of the signal is c plus v, when the objects move away from each other, if they come closer, this value will be c minus v. Here, c is the light velocity constant, v value is the velocity between two objects. It does not matter which of the two objects is sending the signal or the target of the signal is in motion and the rule does not change. Now, relativity theory thinks like that, Alice's law thinks like this. 
Let's see these on an animated graphic. Here is the situation. Our object is here. The signals are coming to the object from everywhere. If the object moves, the movement of these signals does not change relative to itself. They come with the C speed again. Now, there is also an observer here. This observer has a flashlight in his hand. He holds the flashlight like that and sends light signals. These signals are dependent on the same rules as the signals here, because according to this object, they are incoming signals. Let's see what happens. There is an interesting situation. Now, relativity theory says that the speed of these signals going to this direction here, whether or not this moves, the speed of these signals is also C for the observer's reference system and does not change. But I see that this is not so. When I move this, the speed of the signals changes relative to the observer's reference system. However, if it stops, it is equal to C. I see this clearly. Alice Law says, no, it is not like you say. So whatever way we see here is like that. It says it should be. Now, the similarities and the differences are like this. Let's do something more here. Let's put a ruler here. Now, relative to this reference system, it is clear how long the signal coming from here reaches here. It is certain whether I move it or not. It is certain whether it moves or not. The speed of these signals does not change relative to the ruler here, always C. Now, let's change the ruler. This time we put a ruler rope to the observer. Now, the moment I move it, the speed of these signals changes relative to this ruler. Can you see? How are the signals changing? Now, Alice says, this is the way you see it, the event happens the way you see it here. It says that this is not the way the special relativity theory says. Now, we also have an automatic movement. Let's see it in automatic movement. Let's zoom in a little bit. Look. As the object goes this way, the signals are faster than C relative to this ruler. While the object is coming this way, the speed of the signal slows down and speeds up when going this way. Alice Law says that this happens exactly the way you see here. Now, let's move on. Oh, now, we are on a shocking page. Now, look, have experimental verification of signal speeds been performed? It is made for incoming signals. Since special relativity and Alice law say the same thing here, we say yes, it was done for both. What about a measurement about outgoing signals? It isn't made. In other words, the special relativity theory does not have any experimental evidence for outgoing signals.
The speed of a signal which is going towards a moving object has never been measured. Special relativity theory was written in 1905, now, we are in 2020. During this entire time, the speed of a signal going towards a moving object has not been measured. Therefore, anyone who presents an opinion about special relativity actually talks completely wasted, because there is no evidence. And Alice Law has been trying for 20 years for this experiment to be made. The speed of a signal going towards a moving target must be measured. I know, this is a very difficult measurement, but this has to be made. Because the future of physics, theory of physics depends on this measurement. Now, both theories developed a specific mathematics in accordance with their logical implications. The mathematics of special relativity theory is based on the Lorentz transformations and has walked on this path. What did Alice Law do? It was based on C plus V C minus V mathematics in accordance with its own thought and it walked on that path. Of course, after defining such a mathematics, you examine its results. Well, in relativity theory, these results are examined and many sub-results are reached. What are these? Many issues such as time dilation, length contraction, simultaneity etc. have been brought up. For objects moving at a speed close to the speed of light, an idea that time slows down to zero dominates. It is thought that the length of objects shortens for objects that move. What does Alice Law say? In Alice Law, of course, there are results of its own mathematics. Now, I think you already know what the theory of relativity brings. Therefore, I do not see the need to write much about it. From now on, I will explain Alice's law. Now, every theory comes with its own truths. Here are the truths of Alice's law. These are Alice's gifts to physics. And these are its results. These are the results of the C plus V C minus V mathematics of Alice's law that I can see until today. Special relativity and Alice's law have produced very close, but different solutions especially in terms of time dilation, length shortening and simultaneity. In Alice's law, I will say that these are corrected in this way. Because I'm a person who defends Alice's law. Mistakes in the theory of relativity were corrected by Alice's law. What else? Now, there is a very important situation in the mathematics of Alice's law. Doppler shift is currently used in physics and this mathematics establishes a direct relationship with Doppler shift, establishes a 100% relationship. In other words, we know wavelength shift and frequency shift as Doppler shift. C plus V C minus V mathematics establishes a direct relationship with the mathematics of Doppler shift. Apart from this, 
New concepts in physics that have never existed before have come. Concepts such as byte shift, speed shift, angle shift, phase shift, gradient flux shift. Also with Alice Law, two very important but really important issues came up. First, electromagnetic wave speed concept has changed. Second, the subject of image and source has come. This is such an important subject that I can say that a person who does not know this cannot know physics. Should I say this subject has never been given importance in physics? I don't know. Maybe attention has been given, and I have not come across. But since it is a subject directly related to C plus V C minus V mathematics, I can easily say that it is an unknown subject. It is a very important subject. Alice Law has done a great service in these two subjects for physics. Now, these are the gifts that Alice Law brings along. When will these gifts become the facts of physics? When the speed of an outgoing signal towards a moving target is measured, these will take their places as the facts of physics. Now, we come to our final page. Here, in my book, I wrote this subject. This is an excerpt from my book. It is a warning message to physicists. Please pay attention to this message. Because the future of physics, what shape physics will take in the future depend entirely on the fate of this measurement. It does not make any difference for Alice Law, Alice Law can wait. It can wait for 50 years, for 100 years, for 500 years. Alice Law is a law that has existed since the universe was founded. After all, we are the mortal ones. It is important for us to understand, so it is important for us to act. We are the creatures who have to see the truth and act with the truth in our short lives. I would like you to consider this warning. Sincerely. Hope to see you in another video, regards and love to all of you.